Hey guys, it's JP. Today I want to take you through pulling the slack out of the bar when you deadlift. Pulling, out a slack, pulling the slack out of the bar is an important technique that I've used for many years, uh, both with myself and with my lifters, to see success in the deadlift. I have a little saying, and that is, if you don't pull the slack out of the bar, the bar will pull the slack out of you. So it's really important that we build tension in our system, so in our backs, in our legs, and in the bar, before we initiate the lift. Firstly, I want to explain what I mean by pulling the slack out of the bar, or what the slack is. You see, the bar is made of rigid steel, but there's still some give in that bar. There's give in the actual shaft itself. There's give in the way the shaft comes into the bearings on the sleeve. There's give in the way the sleeve comes onto the plate. So there's all this give in the bar, and what we want to do is we want to pull all of that out of the bar before we've initiated the lift. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a three-step process or the three-step, I guess, technique that I use or that I'm thinking about when I'm deadlifting or when I'm teaching someone new how to do this. Now, the important thing to note is that this is not the only way to deadlift and this is not the only way to pull the slack out of the bar, but it's the way that I do it and it's the way that I teach people how to do it. It looks really simple at first. As I said, it's only three steps, but it can actually be quite difficult to get a grasp of. And what's really important to note is that the sequence that I teach has to be learnt step by step. And you can't jump from step one to step two or step two to step three before you've really got the hang of step one. It's not hard, but if you try to jump to step three immediately and try to mix all the steps in at once and try to like, yeah, try to do the finished product before you're ready to go, you'll end up just stunting your own learning uh, process. So it's really important that you really get the hang of the first thing and then figure out the second thing and then figure out the third thing. I'll explain, to the, I'll explain exactly what that is as you go. Okay, so firstly, I'm gonna demonstrate what uh, it looks like when you pull the slack out of the bar um, correctly. So I'm just gonna overlay this video with video of me doing a deadlift some heavy weight, and you'll see in the video that before I've even initiated the lift, like I'm bent over and I've got the bar in my hands and I'm pulling the bar with, I guess, my body weight before I've even started to come down and initiate the lift. And you'll see that the bar even bends slightly. So this is kind of what I mean when I say pulling the, the slack or the tension out of the bar. And it's not just out of the bar, it's out of your whole body. So your back, your, your I guess, spine, hips, all of that, there's, there's all this tension there. So that's what it looks like. In order to learn how to do this, again, we've got to go through really basic steps. The first step, step one is, well, step 1A is breathe in, and step 1B is literally pull the slack out of the bar. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a really basic drill where we just literally do those two things, and we do it multiple times. And you really need to get a hang of this before you can do step two. So I'll show you what it looks like. Come over here. You're going to take your stance, and it's important to note that this is equally as relevant for sumo as it is for conventional. Uh, maybe more, I guess, important for sumo. You can kind of get away without doing it in conventional, but definitely important on a uh, sumo deadlift, especially if you're training or competing on a stiff bar. Okay, so this is literally step one. You're gonna bend over, grab the bar, keep your bum in the air. I guess you can preface this by saying you wanna flatten your back. And step 1A is breathe in, hold your breath. Step 1B is pull the slack out of the bar and you're gonna hear the slack come out of the bar. So this is what it looks like. I've got my stance, I'm bent over the bar, I flatten my back slightly, breathe in. Okay, extremely simple, and it might even be boring, but literally this is how you have to learn it. So you notice that it's very uh, basic, it's just breathe in, hold your breath, and then pull the slack out of the bar. You might be asking, what are we actively doing when we, when we pull on the bar there? Uh, the way I like to describe it, at least to get the sensation right at first, is to pull on the bar with your fingers. So it's like your fingers just kind of grab the bar, but it's important that you don't bend your arms, you're not pulling with your, uh, with your actual elbows or forearms, it's just your fingers. Or maybe for someone that's more advanced, you want to use your lats, so like these muscles underneath here, almost like you're doing a row. So you're kind of like locking your lats a little bit. Or if you're even more advanced, you can even think about using your hamstrings. So you're kind of like you're bent over and you're levering with your hamstrings. What you notice when I pull the slack out of the bar is that my arms don't move, my, my hips don't extend, my back doesn't like lift up against the bar. Really, it's kind of more just my body weight shifting back. So maybe have a look from the side and you'll see that there's no movement there's no movement from my hip extensors on my back. It's just this.
That's literally the first step. What I recommend doing is doing it for four to five sets of five reps. And it sounds so mundane, but you really have to get that right before you can do the next bit. Like I said before, if you try to say, oh yeah, I know what I'm doing and then go to the next step, you're only gonna stunt your learning process. It just takes so much longer that way. It's just how skill acquisition works. Okay, you've got that correct, let's go to step two. Step two is we're gonna come down into our deadlift position. So it's pretty much everything without lifting the bar. This is the hardest part to get right. Step one is not too bad. Step two is really difficult because there's more moving parts, okay? Basically what's gonna happen is that from the moment that you've got the slack out of the bar and you're holding that pressure and that tension in the bar is we need to get our hips into position. And that means dropping our hips down. Now the big mistake that a lot of people make is they drop the hips literally down, slacken their arms, take the slack out of the bar, oh sorry, they release the tension that they've built up and then they yank on the bar anyway completely nullifying the step one. So I'll show you what it's supposed to look like and then I'll show you what people often do wrong. Yet what some people do is they do this. Right, you see in that last example is that as I came down, I kind of like let go of the bar a little bit. I took that tension off the bar and then I just yanked on it. That's incorrect. A good way to think of it is like, as your hips are coming down into position, you should actually be increasing the pressure against the bar. So let's say the bar was loaded to 200. I might, when I'm doing this, put 70 kilos of effort into the bar. That's 70 kilos. And then it's 100 kilos, 120 kilos, 140 kilos, 160 kilos, 180 kilos, and then a bar comes off the ground. So as your hips are coming down into position, you should like be building pressure and like increasing the amount of force you have so that way as soon as you're in the bottom position, the bar like wants to come up off the ground. It's all one kind of action. A couple of important checkpoints to note is that your shins should kind of almost be off the bar initially in the pulling the slack out phase, so in step one, and then your shins meet the bar in step two. And it's almost like a cue or a trigger that as soon as your shins touch the bar, I say socks to bar or pants to bar if you're wearing pants. As soon as your sh or shins, as soon as your shins touch the bar, that's kind of when the lift starts. So maybe if you want to stand over here, come a little bit closer, you're going to see what that looks like. You can just stand up and maybe come. You're going to need to stand over here and you're going to need to sit over the bar so you can see my shins. So you can kind of see how here my shins are back off the bar. There's this space. This space is actually really important. It should be, there should be space. The bar is over my midfoot, but there's still space between my shins. And you're gonna see why in step two. Step one. And then step two is shins come towards the bar. See that? There's space between my shins and the bar. And then my shins meet the bar here. And I'm ready to take off. So, like I said, try not to do step two until you've really mastered step one. And don't do them too quickly. When you are starting to integrate these steps, my recommendation is to stop and pause between every part. Again, don't try to do the whole thing at once. Breathe in, hold your breath. Pull the slack out, hold it. Bring your shin to the bar slowly, hold it. There's a lot of pausing and there's a lot of stopping in, these, in the learning process. That's the fastest way to learn. We've got another saying, move slow, learn fast. If you want to learn things quickly, you have to move slowly. Okay, so that's step one and two. Really easy so far. Once you've got um, the hang of step two, I would recommend pretty similar protocol, four to five sets of five reps of literally doing that. Like you're not even lifting the bar off the ground yet. You're still figuring out the sequence that you're trying to get to. The third step is lifting the bar, which you should already know how to do. If you're watching this video, you should already know how to lift the bar. And the important thing is that you initiate the lift instant or instantaneously as soon as your shins touch a bar. There shouldn't be any delay. In the learning process, there can be, and there actually should be some, some pause when your shins touch a bar, but it should all kind of be one action. As the, my demo, demo video illustrated previously, there should, there should be no delay. It should be as soon as your shins touch a bar, the bar comes straight off the ground and your, your uh, yeah, lift, is, lift is commenced. It can be a useful thing to think about that when you're, um, I guess, in step two and coming towards the bar, that your hips don't come down, your hips go forward. So like, I like to think my hips are back here 
breathe in, pull the slack out. And then on the lift, it's not my hips coming down and bending my knees. It's more like my hips going forward and then coming straight up. So it's like hips back here, hips forward, and then straight up. So that can be a really useful thing to do. Um, so again, just to reiterate, three-step process in this pulling the slack out of the bar tutorial. Step 1A is to breathe in. Step 1B is to physically pull the slack out of the bar with your fingers or your lats, or even better, your hamstrings. Step 2 is uh, to bring your shins to the bar and um, get into position correctly. And in doing so, build pressure, like build tension into the bar. So that way there's no yanking sensation. Instead, it's like you're easing the bar off the ground. Okay, so what looks fairly simple is actually can be quite complicated. My recommendation, take your time in this learning process, do each step uh, step by step. I'm gonna quickly demonstrate the full sequence in uh, as you should be doing it once you're at the tail end of your learning process with all the pauses and stops in all the important locations, okay? so. Again, I'm going to line it up so my shins are slightly off the bar. The bar is still over my midfoot. I'm going to bend over with my hips up, space between my shins and the bar, reach my arms down, and my back is flat, just like normal deadlift technique would enable. First thing I do is breathe in. So that's how to pull the slack out of the bar. If you've got any questions, just let me know, leave them in the comment section below. I know this is a little bit of a longer video, but I hope you find that helpful. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys pulling the slack out of the bar and not having the bar pull the slack out of your spine.